Okay, you math fanatics, here we go. We're ready to start our Math 120 journey. We've done all our review, we've uh, gotten some ideas down, and uh, we're ready to take off with our new Math 120 material. Um, everything begins in Chapter 4, and uh, in 4.1, what we're basically doing is talking about the rules of exponents, um, otherwise known as shortcuts. Okay, and um, basically uh, there are three top rules. There's a condition where we can add the exponents. There's a condition where we can subtract the exponents, and there's a condition where we can multiply. So let me look at it the mathematically. We'll apply it and go from there. Um, to add exponents, the condition that needs to be met is that we need to be multiplying same base. If I have that condition, right, so we're multiplying an exponential expression with the base A to another exponential expression with base A. So that condition, right, is where we can add the exponents. We essentially keep the base and add the exponents. So here's a little quasi-proof why that's true. Let's take a number 2 and raise it to the third power and then multiply it to 2 to the second power, right? So this is uh, basically our rule. But let me show you why it works, right? 2 to the third is 2 times, oops, 2 times 2 times 2. And then we're multiplying it to 2 squared, which is 2 times 2. So you can see, after we expand both these expo uh, expressions out, we're actually multiplying 2 to itself 5 times, all right? And so obviously, obviously the shortcut, rather than doing all this, right, I'll keep the base and add my exponents. So we get 2 to the fifth power. And no, you don't need to expand that out. Um, I'm more interested in you guys pushing exponents around. So 2 to the fifth is a fine answer. So again, rather than doing all that, that was a proof. The shortcut is what it applies. We're multiplying same base. So I'll keep the base and add the exponents. So looking at this a couple of other ways, right? Let's say we had x to the fourth and we were multiplying it to x to the third. So I'm multiplying two exponential expressions with the same base. So the rule says to keep the base and add the exponents. All right? Of course, that simplifies to x to the seventh. All right? So same base, multiplication, keep the base, add the exponents. Um, on another note, please show your work. Um, this is showing me that you're using the rule properly, um, especially since we're online and I'm not watching you or anything like that. So if you can go from here to here and then to here, that tells me that you're seeing the rule and you're using the rule accurately. So please show me that step in all your work. Um, if we had something like y to the fifth and y to the uh, fourth power, Right, so we have the conditions we need, the bases are the same, so I'll keep the base and I will add the exponents. This would give me y to the ninth. All right, getting a little crazier if I had x plus 2 to the third and I was multiplying it to x plus 2. Again, this looks a little crazy. Uh, this obviously is an exponential expression with a base of x plus 2, and this also is an exponential expression and it's to the first power. All right, so my base is the same, so I'm going to keep it, and I'm going to add my exponents, right, using my first, uh, basically it's called a product rule, all right, and then uh, this shortens to x plus 2 to the fourth power, all right, so same base multiplication, we keep the base, add the exponents, famously known as our product rule. Okay, uh, in red I have some cases where students mistakenly use the uh, product rule. Um, for starters, if I have x cubed plus x squared, let me change to a red pen. All right, I often have some students who will say that that's equal to x to the 30 plus 2 power. But notice I'm adding here, I'm not multiplying. So that is not a true statement. So be careful when you're, when you're adding um, expressions, we're actually combining like terms. Uh, not multiplication, so it doesn't even apply. And then here, um, students sometimes they'll see the rule, right? So, hey, I'm multiplying same base, but in application, they'll write it like this, right? And so we're not combining like terms. What we're basically doing the correct way is we are combining exponents. So there's the correct way to look at that expression. That's the wrong way, right? So they're not, let me put that in red. So be careful when you apply the rule. 
right? So product rule, the conditions to add exponents is we need to be multiplying the same base. All right, so the next rule, if this is the product rule, the next rule is the quotient rule. And what happens here is you'll notice that we are dividing same base. And it turns out that that's the condition needed to subtract my exponent. It will always be your top exponent minus your bottom exponent. So the rule is if you're dividing the same base, you keep that base, and then you basically subtract right the bottom exponent from the top. So again, let's kind of show this at work. right? Let's just say we had 5 to the 4th, and I was dividing it by 5 to the 1st power. All right, so again, uh, we can see the application of the rule, but to prove this, 5 to the 4th is 5 times 5 times 5, and 5 to the 1st is just 5. So we do see that a 5 will divide out, leaving us with 5 multiplied to itself 3 times, or 5 to the 3rd. So there's kind of your proof. Of course, the shortcut would simply be to keep that base and take the top exponent and subtract the bottom, giving us 5 to the 3rd. Quotient rule. So again, uh, to use it, we have to be dividing by the same base. And so looking at some examples, if I had x to the 7th divided by x to the 4th, I am dividing by the same base. So the rule, the quotient rule says to keep that base and take my top exponent and subtract my bottom. Again, please show me that step that tells me you see the rule and you're using the rule. And then simplifying that, we have x to the 3rd as our final answer. All right, and if we had y to the ninth over y to the third, right, then what I have here, right, is I have a division, same base, so I keep the base, top exponent minus the ex uh, bottom exponent, which gives us y to the sixth, all right, and if I try to get a little crazy with it, you know, maybe we had x plus two uh, to the sixth power, and we're dividing it by x plus two to the fourth power, all right, so we're dividing the base is the same, it's x plus 2, so we keep that base, top exponent minus bottom exponent. And so in this case, the final answer would be x plus 2 squared. All right, so there's your quotient rule, the rule that allows us to subtract exponents. Uh, again, like the product rule, there's some misapplication, so be careful. Um, when I have x to the fifth minus x squared, what I'm basically doing here is combining like terms. I'm not using the quotient rule. As a matter of fact, the quotient rule needs a quotient, not a subtraction. Again, sometimes some students will actually see the quotient, but they'll misidentify it, right? They'll turn it to a combining of like terms problem, right? So don't be doing that. Don't, don't misapply the rule. What I mean is, right, we're going to keep the base, and we're going to subtract the exponent. So the subtraction occurs up in the exponents giving us x to the third. So that is why I want to see that step, all right? So not only do you see the rule, but you can apply it correctly. So show me that little mini step. Uh, last but not least for this video is the conditions we need to multiply exponents. Uh, what you'll notice what's happening here is we're taking basically an exponent of an exponent, or some students like to say a power of a power. And I think the book calls this the exponential rule. Uh, so again, uh, what it says is you can keep that base and then take your two exponents and you can multiply them together. So here's kind of the proof of why this works. Um, you know, let's just say we had something like 3 squared and I was cubing that. All right, so if I did this longhand, the parentheses 3 squared tells us we have 3 times 3 and we're raising it to the third power. Now my base is 3 times 3. And if I multiply it to itself three times, we get that. And then, of course, the net effect, if you take a look at that final product, I'm essentially multiplying three to itself, one, two, three, four, five, six times. So there's the actual proof. Of course, the shortcut is just to keep that big base and multiply my two exponents together, giving us three to the sixth. Then again, please show me that step. See a rule, use the rule and then simplify. Okay, so let's use this a couple times. So if I had x to the third and I was raising it to the fourth power, I have an exponent of an exponent or a power of a power. So classic exponential rule. So we're going to keep that base and we're going to multiply the exponents. In this case, giving us x to the twelfth. All right, if I had a y, I'd say to the uh, uh, second power and we were raising that to the fifth power, 
right? Again, I have a power of a power. So we keep the base and we multiply the exponents, giving us y to the tenth, right? And if we try getting a little crazy, if we ever see something like x plus 2, right, to the, say to the fourth, and then I took that and I squared it, again, I have a power of a power, an exponential. So we're going to keep that big base and we're going to multiply the exponents getting us x plus 2 to the 8. All right, so those are our three top rules. You'll find you'll use these a lot. Product rule allows us to keep the base and add the exponents. Quotient rule, we're uh, going to keep the base and subtract the exponents, top minus bottom. And then when the next rule is the exponent rule. I basically have a power of a power. We keep that big base and we multiply the exponents. All right, so some more rules and shortcuts coming up, but that should get you started on the first big three. See you guys in the next video.